hope you guys brought your sandals because I'm about to knock your socks off. <laughs> uh, I want to start with a joke. Why did um, Why did the man throw his phone in the lake? Uh, muscle spasm. <laughs> <laughs> That's how it um, my topic today is cell phone use and why people should um, use their phones less. And I know people have already talked about this, but I'm going to take a kind of different approach to it. Um, Lisa Yerichiko said that 46 times a day there is um, people that are looking at their phones 46 times a day, which is kind of a lot of times. And over, if you add that all together, Americans together are looking at their phones 8 million times a day, which is a lot of times. It's just, a, I don't know, it's a big number, might be impactful, but 46 times a day is kind of crazy. Um, so today I'll be talking about how your cell phone use can um, inhibit like personal relationships, it can inhibit uh, your sleeping schedule, and it can cause anxiety for people. So um, to start off, your personal relationships can be um, I guess like it can it can be detrimental for your personal relationships if you use your phone too much because first of all um, it will cause you to not have like these face-to-face -face interactions with people which I think are very important and uh, Kristen Anderson did a study with um, with a few different people and uh, found that um, people are more more likely to like replace face-to-face -face communication with um, social or uh, not social interaction with technology and with um, cell phone use. So for like social media or that kind of thing, and they'll feel like um, if they see something online, like say someone posted something about um, something they're going through, and uh, you read it and you see them in person, you're not inclined to ask them because you already feel like you know them. If if that makes sense. Um, so. I guess going on from there, I had a friend who um, was hanging out in a group of people and had already seen that someone's dad was going through something, and they went, and they didn't feel like they should ask them about it because they had already like read about it. So it kind of inhibits that connection that they could have had if they had, um, if they weren't on their phone so much and already knew that about them. If that makes sense. Um, so. I guess going on from there, um, your cell phone use can also inhibit like your ski your sleep schedule. And um, blue light is a big thing with uh, cell phone use because um, it suppresses your um, secretion of melatonin. And there was a study done at um, Harvard, and it was published in like the Harvard Health Publisher, um, basically saying there was this experiment and there was blue light versus green light. And they tested um, like the same amount of light for 6.5 hours, and blue light was two times as high um, as inhibiting like your secretion of melatonin, and it changed your circadian rhythm by three hours versus an hour and a half for green light, um, which is kind of a lot. And to show you that, um, like if you stay up, like just on your phone in bed, maybe like late at night, past the sun's going, past the time that the sun has gone down, um, you'll just cause yourself to continue this kind of loop of staying up and um, I guess in turn keep you up later. And I, I definitely know like that happens for me all the time. Um, I think my freshman year, there was a few times where I would just be on my phone. I would stay up till like maybe 3, 4 a.m. just like literally doing nothing. YouTube videos, I don't know. Um, so then I guess to um, to move on a little bit more, there's um, by having by using your phone too much, it can cause anxiety if you don't have enough sleep. But also, it can cause anxiety if um, it can cause anxiety um, in, a, in a couple of different other ways as well. So one of the ways that it can cause anxiety is by um, Okay, so it's it's like an anxiety loop. So people will like use their phone for a little bit. They'll they'll check it, and then like say you're um, 
you're texting someone or say you're um, you're like on Instagram or whatever, some social media, and then they'll like set it down, like, um, and they'll like keep going back to it, if that makes sense. Like they'll have anxiety that, that they like, they're waiting for something or that they're looking for something, and if they put it in their pocket, they'll only be thinking about it because they're constantly on it, and it just creates this like anxiety loop. And another thing that will also create anxiety is like social anxiety, because you feel like disconnected from people, and, um, yeah, it just kind of, kind of like hurts that kind of part of uh, yourself as well. Uh, so um, there was a year that I took off of social media. And I think it really helped me. I want. I think it's. I think it's really helpful to have an example to kind of visualize it because um, if you have, uh, if you see like a problem and you have no idea like what it looks like to like stop doing this, it's hard to hard to see it and hard to like imagine that it actually works. So I took a year off of social media to try and try and figure out like if I could change those kinds of things and I thought it was really helpful. Um, first of all, I think it definitely helped my social like my, my relationships. So I didn't I didn't go on social media for a year because I wanted to have more meaningful relationships with people and make more lasting connections, and I did it my first year of college as well. And I thought it was um, thought it was really helpful because I was able to like meet people face to face and learn about them from interaction. And I thought it was very very helpful in that regard. Um, and then also I thought that it it helped my sleep schedule a lot because I wasn't looking at my phone at night nearly as much and um, I really was only using my phone for its like intent and its purpose, just to like contact people if I needed to. Um, and I guess lastly, it also helped with my um, with like social anxiety. Like it, it helps like branch out and uh, push you out of your boundaries. If you're not usually like a social person, it will help you to um, talk to people a little bit more than you're used to. And it's just it's kind of a cool thing. I really enjoyed it. Um, so a couple steps you guys can take in order to um, kind of uh, limit your like screen time and to like kind of help with these issues. Um, if you're an iPhone user, you have like the screen time stuff, and it's basically like an application that is built into the phone where you can um, you can limit how much time you can spend on certain applications if you want to. I think it's really helpful, um, and that can help with sleep. Like if you if you want to spend like maybe tops like two three hours a day on your phone, you can set like that time, and I think it's really helpful. Um, it can also help with um, relationships if you don't spend as much time on your phone. So um, because you're able to interact with people on a more personal level and on a face to face kind of thing. Um, and lastly, it'll help with um, it'll help with getting rid of anxiety because the less time you spend spend plugged into something um, the less time you spend plugged in uh, the more you're able to like uh, I, I guess interact with people Sedona, a few thoughts. Okay. Um, I like to open it with a joke. I thought that was funny. Um, thought that was nice. Um, you had a nice setup. Uh, you stated what you were going to discuss um, in terms of like how cell phone affects sleep, health, friendships, stuff like that, which I thought was nice to organize. Uh, there was a good amount of data, but I think um, going ahead and explaining like before you say exactly what the statistic is, explaining what the source is beforehand helps with your credibility a little bit more. Because you said there was a study done by like Kristen Anderson. I I don't know I don't know who that is. That might just be me. I'm sorry. Um, but if that was someone that was just like a random like uh, writer or a scientist, it would have been good to be like, oh, they're a scientist. They've worked here for a couple of years. They're credible. Maybe just to help out with a little bit of context. Um, maybe practicing a little bit more. Not that it was. I'm not saying it was bad, but like I know for myself at least, when I practice a little bit more, I feel more comfortable. So maybe that could have eliminated like the checking and maybe would have felt a little bit more 
uncomfortable there, but overall, I thought it was a great speech. I like the personal stories you had that kept the speech moving along. It wasn't like you were just spurting out facts. It was you were saying something, st uh, putting statistics down, relating it to what you were talking about, and then also putting in personal stories, which I thought was um, made it very, very good. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, I, the joke at the beginning is okay. I think it's fine. Uh, since we had a couple of speeches about cell phone usage already, I, your reference to that also might make a little bit of sense. Um, the uh, I think you you don't quite hit your exit line at the end, and that seemed like that would be the one place where additional rehearsal would have worked because. I think you've got an idea there, but it just doesn't come across the way you want it to. It doesn't finish the speech the way it's supposed to. Uh, most of the presentation things are pretty solid. Once in a while you end up with your arms behind your back, uh, but most of the time you seem like you're engaged when you're talking to us and you're looking at us, and I, I appreciated all of those things. Um, I, I, I do agree that we could use a little bit more data on some of the things, uh, but uh, the general information sounds okay. The notion that uh, our relationships could be enhanced a bit more by spending less time on cell phones, I, I, it, it sounds very generic. It's like there's a trade-off. We have 24 hours a day. If we spend eight hours a day on the cell phone, that's eight hours less that we have to spend with other relationships. Would people be spending it with those other relationships anyway? Or are they filling the empty time with their the, that they have in their lives with you know, at least some kind of contact. I think that there there needs to be, you know, a little bit more context. And this is a place where you could talk about uh, uh, real examples, either personal ones or some that you've read about that would illustrate that point and get them a little bit more emotionally involving. Uh, and I, it just feels like it all stays at a very abstract level. And we, and I think we get that in a lot of places that we've got these abstract concepts that sometimes there's some statistical information to back up and occasionally a study that you're talking about, but it still is, it remains something that's a little bit more vague than it needs to be. For instance, the benefits that you acquired from the, your year of uh, living without the social media, I'm going, okay, so you say you found it rewarding. How? What friendship did you develop that you wouldn't have developed otherwise? What activities did you engage in that you might have let skirt uh, uh, if you had been on social media? Um, when, you, when you say you found it personally satisfying, you got better sleep? I, I mean, how do, how do we know these kinds of things? How do you know those kinds of things? We need some information that goes along with that that's detailed that, that, that pulls us in. So it's not that what you're saying is wrong, it's that it's not as compelling as it needs to be, and it would be more involving and engaging if you had particulars to go along with those points. All right, I'm going to stop there because I'm trying